hello everyone and welcome back so in this video i'll take you through configuring vlan svi and dhcp so before we jump into the configurations i'll first give you a brief overview of the three what is like what is vlan svi and also dhcp So to start with VLANs, see the situation where there is like different department in the given company. So you just find out that there is engineering, the sales, there is finance department. So with this department, there's each department has several workstation or computers. So like ten or twenty, just just like any number. So this department are connected to, to the layer layer two switch for access layer to the access layer which is mostly the layer layer two switches to limit the traffic to a given department vlans are used so in such situation vlans increases performance so so the performance is increased by only allowing the required traffic into the required department and with the department i mean villa because each department will be in given villa so vlans also brings about security so by not allowing given traffic into some department and communication between some departments so there's data privacy so basically vlan segments the network so by segmenting I mean it subnets the network into different subnets. So you just find that every VLAN is like a different network. So when it comes to SVI, SVI are switch virtual interfaces. So to allow communication between some VLANs, so you can find that it is a computer policy for a given company to allow maybe communication between finance. Not actually finance but sales yeah actually sales and finance department so to allow communication between the two departments you have to do like something like villain inter villain communication so to do that one of the ways to accomplish it is by using the svi so if svi brings about in the VLAN communication, SVIs are configured on layer 3 switch. Also, you can accomplish this by configuring router on the stick. So, router on stick is done using a router instead of a layer 3 switch. But I can say in most in most cases, SVI is used for in the VLAN communication, which are configured in the distribution layer of the network. So, like in this network, this is a tier 2 network infrastructure so for me I'll, I'm conf I'll configure the SVI in the layer 3 switch here which is done in most of the networks with the DHCP it is a IP service it can be configured in the layer 3 switch it can also be configured in the router but not actually in the layer 2 switch so it, it can also be pro provisioned through a server so maybe I can have a server here connected to the uh, three or this or the edge router or the just to provision the IP addressing. So with the DHCP, it is one. It is uh, the IP service which provides the IP addresses for the workstay for the end devices. Either the end devices connected to the access layer switches, the access wireless access points. Yeah is the one which provides the IP addresses for the end devices okay so with that brief overview I think it is the right time to jump into the configuration so let's get started so for today's lab I'll be using this network here it is a GNS3 designed network so I'll be using the, the, the two of the devices here the layer 3 switch and the layer 2 switch so before I start, the devices are running real Cisco images. 
but the pieces are actually the virtual VPCs for the GNS3 emulator. The only PC which is running a real operating system is the Kali Debian here, of which for this lab I'll be, I'll be not using the Kali Debian. I'll power on the layer 3 switch, I'll just start it, and also I'll start the layer 2 switch. So the two devices are now up and running, but because I don't want to extend to this part of the network, I, I just want to keep things more simple, and also I want to spend as less time as possible. So I'll just change this PC to I'll just customize the template to I'll I'll change the symbol. Okay, so the reason why I've changed the, the virtual PC to a different color is that I want the diff, the two PC, VPC to belong to a different VLAN. So this the green one, it will belong to VLAN 10 and the blue one, it will belong to VLAN 20. So VLAN 10, it will be my, my finance department, so I can just label it. And just label it from here. Oops. Okay. Can just add the villain tag below the the villain name like that. Oh, it's not opening. Villain twenty. Okay, like that. Okay, so because the, the two switches are up running, you can just jump to the configuration straight away. So I open the console tabs for each of the two switches. This, like using the Solar Party Custom console. There's my video, the link is up here. Directing to how to, how to install it custom console for your GNS3 I'll also open the console for the layer 2 ok first we'll adjust, I'll just wait the first console tab to open ok so the layer 2 is the layer 2 switch is boot, just give it a little amount of time to boot, so I can just give While it is booting, I can just open the console tab for the other layer 3 switch. So the devices takes time to boot according to the, the RAM size are located for the devices but maybe after some time the devices will boot so while the devices are booting I can just 
go on and explain now the I'll do the configuration okay. What's not? so this is how the, the configs will be done so I'll start the configuration from the layer 2 switch so in the layer 2 switch I'll go on and configure the interfaces connecting the VPCs both PC1 and PC3 so after configuring the interface I'll, I'll then configure also the interface connecting to the layer 3 switch so for this interface connecting the layer 2 to layer 3 switch I'll configure it as a trunk interface so with the trunk interface the both VLAN 10, 20 and also the native VLAN 1 will be able to communicate to the layer 3 switch so I'll also configure the VLANs in the layer 2 switch so basically the layer 2 switch is is the access layer switch so it is where the VLANs are actually configured so I'll configure also the VLANs here the VLAN 10 for finance and VLAN 20 for management okay so after that I'll, the, I'll be done with the layer 2 switch so I'll come to the layer 3 switch then do the interface configuration so in the layer 3 switch is where I'll configure the SVI so the, I'll configure the SVIs in the layer 3 switch to allow the communication between the finance and management VLAN okay the DHCP services for the for the pieces belonging to the two different VLANs so the DHCP which which will provide the IP addressing for the both of the devices in finance and management VLANs I'll also configure it in the layer 3 switch so the DHCP service assigns the D, D, default gateway it also assigns the DNS server maybe if there's DNS server in the network but for this network there's no DNS server but it can also be configured in the maybe root, the router router 1 or maybe in the layer 3 switch so the DCP service will assign the default grid, the default gate one the DNS server. Okay, so can just confirm if the two the two okay is like they have booted. So to speed up I can first stop the layer 3 switch and start the configuration from the layer 2 switch. So layer 3 ok stopped can just go ahead with the layer 2 switch. Okay. The problem is with the RAM size assi assigned to each of the devices. Okay. Okay, you can just first confi configure the host name. Okay, so, con global configuration mode, then host name, layer 2 switch. Okay, here we go. So, now I can configure the interfaces, but first I can just confirm, verify the interface data. So, do show interface status ok these are the interface status interface switch port access VLAN 10 Okay. Uh, VLAN 10. Okay, 
it so you, as you can see from the the console the vlan has been created for me access vlan does not exist creating vlan 1 vlan 10 so if i just try to verify the vlan and just exit then do show show vlan 3 so you can see that the VLAN has been created for me and interface gigabit ethernet 01 has been allocated to the VLAN so to move on I'll configure interface interface gigabit 0 wait 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 oops we have I've done a mistake I've configured the wrong interface for the VLAN 10 but there's no problem can just ex extend the labels like this but yeah like that so PC3 will belong to the finance and PC1 will belong to management the reason I've done that is that I've configured the wrong interface to the wrong VLAN so now gigabit ethernet 01 the one which will belong to 10 and gigabit 00 will belong to VLAN 20 so you can go on So the VLAN has been created for me. So now what I'll do, I'll give the name for the VLANs since they have been already, since they have been created. I'll just, I'll give the names to the VLAN. So VLAN ten name. So our VLAN ten is the finance. Okay. I'll also give the name the VLAN 10. I'll add name to VLAN 10. Our VLAN 20. Name management. Okay, let's see. I can just uh, what I'll do. I I write the configs now to start up config can then verify the VLANs The, my, the VLANs are here finance, management, VLAN 10, finance, active with gigabit 01 belonging to the VLAN, gigabit Ethernet 00 belonging to management VLAN 20. Okay, but the switch also has, has the default VLANs, which are the FDDI, VLAN 1 or 2, all the address are the default configured VLAN. Okay, let's go on and on. So, now I'll configure the trunk interface connecting to the layer 3 switch. Okay, trunk interface. Okay, the trunk interface is connecting through 
gigabit zero z gigabit ethernet zero Okay, so there's something here. An interface host trunk encapsulation is auto cannot be configured to trunk mode. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll first change the interface configure encapsulation, sorry, to dot one q from auto. So the reason to change the encapsulation to dot one q is because of the VLAN tagging the encapsulation dot one q is one which supports the VLAN tagging interface switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q so now I can configure it as trunk interface Now I'll configure the allowed VLAN through the trunk interface. Switch port, switch port trunk allowed VLANs. Oh, so I've allowed all the VLANs through the interface, but which is not good to, due to some security issues. So for sec, for due to security issue, you can maybe allow only the required VLANs only but because this is just a lab I've allowed all the VLANs through the trunk interface so what I'll do I'll verify the trunk interface I can first verify the interface status can see right from here gigabit ethernet 00, zero status connected vlan 20 wx is auto speed auto ok 20 out oh, 10 auto auto ok gigabit ethernet 03 connected trunk auto auto ok so speed and wx will be auto negotiated ok so what I do I verify I, I think there's no need of more verification but then what I'll do I just copy the running configs to startup config okay. okay now the device will be in position to boot with the configurations made okay now I'll connect the, I'll start the layer 3 switch and do the necessary configurations which are the, this, the SVI configuration for the, inter, the VLAN communication and also the DHCP service. Okay, now, now I'll go ahead and do the necessary configuration in the layer 3 switch. First, I'll start. I'll first stop the layer two switch to 
leverage the available RAM. So So I'll first change the host name. Host name. Oops. DNS lookup. Uh, now I'll have to disable the DNS lookup now. I'll first disable the domain lookup because it whenever I'll handle the wrong configuration it will have to translate and it will take a lot of time. Okay. Also to get rid of the the logs I'll also do the login synchronous for the line vty 0 to 15 So what I'll do now, I'll create the, the two VLANs in the layer 3 switch because without the VLANs I cannot do the, the SVI for the VLANs. So the two VLANs so this is how you create the SVI so what I'll 
configure yes the IP address for the SBI. Then the subnet mask. So for VLAN 10, I'll go with network 10. Then no shard. I configured the interface not to shard. So then I'll configure the interface. The SVI for VLAN 20. Then I'll, I'll verify the IGADES VI is configured. So you can see from here the VLAN 10, IP address, IP address. Manu, yes, oh, yes, Manu, down, down, why? I think I should enable IP root. The SVIs are still down, down. So to troubleshoot the SVIs, I'll first create the trunk interface, then configure static IP addresses for the VPC and confirm whether the VPCs will be able to communicate. Then after that, I'll I'll configure the DHCP in the layer 3 switch.
so pc1 is in vlan 20 so give it a p prefix prefix length of 24 then the default gateway which is the IP address for the SVI for VLAN 20 and SVI not able to pick the default gateway so I have to work on the SBI So as you can see from here, the SVS have changed the status to app and protocol app. So I think the problem was with the trunk interface. I had to create the, the trunk interface connecting the layer 3 to layer 2 switch. And the other problem why the PC1 is not pinging the default gateway which is the S VLAN 20 SVI IP address is because the switch 2 layer 2 switch is, is not powered on so I'll start it so I just realized that I was not recording but I'll just update you for the configuration which I have configured so I have configured the just I've configured the IP DHCP pool for VLAN 20 of which for the pool you, you, you can configure the default router that is the default gateway the, the network with the prefix length 
and so I, I configured both for the prefix length and the subnet mask for maybe who is new to the to networking so I configured the DNS server because right now I have no DNS server in the network I configured the Google DNS server which is 8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. Also configured the list to two days, so the DCP list will be renewed after every two days. Also configured the IP addresses to be excluded from the list, which is 20 IP addresses. So the list will start from 192.168.20.21.21. So now I want to configure the for pool for VLAN 10 so you can just sit and start right away. Okay. So default router. So the default router is the same as the default gateway which is the IP address of the assigned to the SBI the network also the prefix LAN which is the same as the 255.2 Zero. So configure the list, the DCP list, which is the to two days, which is the duration for which the DCP assigned addresses will be dropped for new ones. Configure it to two days, and after that, I can configure the DNS server. Google DNS server then exit and I'll configure the IP addresses to be excluded from the DHCP list which is all which is 10 IP addresses so the list will start from 192.168.10.11 now I'll verify the GTP service configured There's no any DCP binding.
so right now we have DCP SVIs configured in on layer 3 switch and also we have the VLANs configured on the layer 2 switch so now everything is into position and it is up and running so now what I'll do I'll, I'll try to access the DCP service from the P VPCs so I'll be this can't find DHCP server so I have to troubleshoot this further I still know any list from the DHCP. That's, we can just try to show the run to verify the running configs from the running configs. PDC people, VLAN 20, network, game, default router, DNS server, list okay. DHCP ports are okay. The VLANs are okay. okay. Maybe the trunk. Now you have to confirm the trunk interface is if it is if it is up and running. The trunk is running, allowing all VLANs.
the trunk is also up and running from layer to switch trunk in all vlans okay. so. okay the problem is here so you can realize from the vlan information we have the 10 vlan and 20 but no interface allocated to the vlans you can just see it from here so i love to configure the interfaces to the vpcs each to each vlan it belongs so okay so guys this is how network engineers do the network troubleshooting just a matter of verifying configurations and whether something is up and running So gigabit 00, zero belongs to VLAN 20 I'll also assign the interface gigabit Ethernet zero one to be like ten. Okay, the interfaces now are assigned to the respective VLAN so what I'll do now I'll try to request for IP from PC PC1 no PC3 because PC1 I initially configured a static IP address but I'll just change to dynamic PDCP so it is requesting
Okay. So for PC1, I assigned static IP address and it's able to pick the default IP, which is the VLAN 20, IP, VLAN 20 SVI IP address. So I'll have to first initialize the dynamic IP addressing for PC1. So what I'll do, I'll change the IP addressing to dynamic. can't find the HCP server so lot of troubleshooting Dora. So the PC1 has successfully obtained dynamic IP address for, from the DCP server configured in layer 3 switch. So you can also see from the DCP server event debugging that there are, there's some information. So DCP sent a notification of discover so basically dora has taken place so basically dora has happened which is the discover offer request acknowledgement that is the process through which a client goes goes through to obtain a dynamic IP address you can see so we can I can just verify from can 
see this one assigned IP address the client ID which is the client MAC address lease expiration April 20th 2020 yeah VLAN 20 active okay. also configure the IP dynamic IP for PC3 Okay, so PC3 is still not in position to obtain the DCP assigned address. So I can just troubleshoot the problem from here. Okay. You can just troubleshoot the problem from there. Here because I've already debugged the IP DCP events. Sending notification of discover. Okay. Okay. DCP offer notify setup one and two dot one sixty dot ten dot eleven. So the debug message shows that it has assigned an IP address with one ninety two dot one six eight dot ten dot eleven to this client with this ad mac address so you can just come to verify from show Yeah, exactly. For VLAN 10, it has been leased. So, VLAN 10 PC3. So, okay, it has been assigned. It is here. Dora. Acknowledge. Okay. So guys, that how you configure VLANs, SVI, and DHCP. So troubleshooting starts from the basics. Yeah. So the devices have IPs. You can also ping the default gateways. So without the SVI, without the SVI, there could not be the communication between the two devices, mm -hmm. the end devices. So now I'll try to ping each of the hand devices, the VPC, to see whether they are able to communicate.
so the VPCs are able to communicate. That is because there is SVI. So shutting the SVI down, the VPC will be will not be able to communicate. You can just try that. So debug messages slows down the performance of the network so you should get rid of them unless troubleshooting. Exactly. So without the SVI, you cannot communicate with the other VPC. So without SVI, there is no communication between different VLANs. You can just bring it up. Bring it up. <laughs> no shut down. Cap. how one should go about configuring the SVI DTP and VLANs and also alongside troubleshooting I've shown you how to troubleshoot so to enable me to give more content like this just like ring that bell and also don't forget to subscribe thank you